regional airports here in North Africa and specifically in Morocco for business aviation and general aviation. And in his opinion, uh, there, there doesn't seem to be a problem and the uh, airport authorities are very cooperative with the uh, operators uh, in allowing them to access the airports. So uh, from, from what I basically hear from you is the, the government agencies or the civil aviation authorities or the airport authorities should pay more attention to the business aviation and general aviation to allow this access and also to, uh, to give access to nearby airports and provide logistics, basically. Uh, like uh, Mr. Hassan mentioned, uh, between Dubai Airport and uh, DWC, uh, New Airport, uh, we're seeing a move to push all the business aviation to that airport uh, at some point. Uh, uh, do you think this is healthy? Yeah. Well, the option isn't, you know, we need another option because Dubai, as you rightly said, with slot restrictions, it impedes the whole point of business aviation. Certainly for the U.S. clients, they're not used to that slot restrictions and going into London Luton can be a nightmare when you get behind schedules. So I think the option of having an airport that's a little bit further out but that's open to business aviation, that doesn't have restrictions, is critical to the growth of the market because otherwise, as I said, the commercial air traffic commercial traffic takes precedent, business aviation gets put on the tail and it becomes very difficult to operate. So DWC is a great opportunity for business aviation in, the, in that region and you know that type of planning needs to happen as was referenced earlier. You know, Business aviation starts in a lot of the emerging countries with heads of state travel then migrates in to charter and private travel and that takes a long time. So getting the infrastructure in place in these markets now to support this future growth is a very, very good thing. I, I think uh, MIBA is in the right direction, uh, working with the civil aviation authorities, uh, trying to facilitate more access to uh, alternate airports, like Ms. Ali mentioned, uh, with the Albatine Airport uh, in Abu Dhabi uh, that's dedicated to private aviation. So maybe we can see more and more of these uh, airports coming up in the uh, region. Uh, I think everybody... Uh, enjoyed the presentation that Captain Samir gave regarding the uh, World Food Program. Uh, and uh, you know, today the general business aviation uh, is, is perceived as a luxurious limousine of travel for you know, upper class people and uh, segmented group of the society. Uh, in one way, this reflects negatively uh, on, uh, on this type of business uh, where it comes to uh, fulfilling uh, the corporate social responsibility. Uh, what's, what's your view on contributing to uh, humanitarian causes uh, and projects uh, such as uh, the Fly and Feed uh, or other projects to assist in the uh, mid avac uh, operations or you know, throughout the whole world? Uh, how, how what, what's the impact on, on the business, do you think, in participating in such projects since uh, they're non-for-profit? Uh, Mr. Hassan? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Samir today uh, broke our hearts with his uh, talking about hunger and uh, poverty in business aviation when everybody is under the impression that we are talking about wealth and rich people and all this. But uh, again, I feel that uh, business aviation, same like uh, uh, classical airlines, has two faces. Face of wealth, which we have to admit, uh, it's uh, one of the main uh, uh, purposes of business aviation is to serve uh, wealthy, uh, business uh, people. I mean, uh, this is a fact, we cannot deny. But the other face is to serve the community. So humanitarian is a duty on any, actually on any business, any business. including Correct. business aviation. Uh, 
what I said about airlines, you know, airlines, they offer you a business class for people who can afford it. Uh, on the same plane, you have the economy. And also in airline, you have the low cost airlines also. So uh, again, in business aviation, there is no conflict as it looks in the first time that there is uh, business aviation is for the rich. True, it is for the rich, but it is for serving the community. And maybe one of the main issues which we need to work on in business aviation, especially in the region, and this is part of MIBAC uh, activities, is to remove this uh, uh, tradition or this impression that business aviation is to serve the rich and the wealthy. Actually, business aviation is to serve efficiency. When I take uh, a businessman from one city to another city, make a meeting, come back to his office same day, and meet with his staff same day, this is efficiency. We need to give the right impression about business aviation. We need efficiency to become really the face and not only the will. True, we do not deny will is part of business aviation, but efficiency is the most important. And the most of all is to serve the community. Serving community is the duty of everyone, whether uh, aviation, or industry, uh, chemical uh, industry, any, any or whatever. business for that matter. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh, uh, how do you view this? Uh? Well, Mr. Samir's presentation <coughs> was excellent and definitely heart wrenching. And part of my earlier career was flying in Sudan, so I saw it right, firsthand. Yeah. So <laughs> certainly encourage everybody that sure. can to support. Um, I think there's a lot of misinformation out there in the marketplace, and it's very important for us to educate. Certainly in the U.S., and then I'll jump back to this region, but in the U.S. Recently, with the, the current administration, there's been a full frontal attack on business aviation. And I think Peter referenced it in his earlier presentation. We were number one on the ground in Haiti. So business aviation doesn't get the credibility of how it often supports communities. Colorado, we've got a very supportive governor. And uh, in April of this year, it was the National Appreciation Month for business aviation, how it's impacted lives in the communi community positively. And uh, he went out on the, on the, on the, in the community and explained that Business Aviation Colorado is an economic driver, $2 billion a year in this state. And people weren't aware of that. With the recent floods, business aviation, again, was a huge well, support. Yeah. Sure. So I think we need to get out there. I mean, the U.S. is pushing hard with no plane, no gain. Uh, corporations are donating their aircraft. I think it's a vital part of giving back and definitely making sure people are aware that, yes, there is a luxury side to business aviation. That cannot be denied. But ultimately, it is a tool for practicality and efficiency. It does drive communities, countries, and the UAE is a great example of that. And it can give back. So I'd like to see more of that getting out there into the marketplace and think it has been underserved. I mean, people have already forgotten about Haiti and seeing those first caravans on the ground. But that was business aviation that helped support that tragedy. And we continue to support the, these tragedies. So I think it needs to get out there much more. Thank you, Josh. Oh. I, I think we, uh, we heard a lot about uh, this particular issue and uh, maybe this is an action item we can take as MIBA to, uh, like Mr. Hamdan uh, suggested, to enhance the image of the business uh, to uh, try to show a different side uh, to, to general aviation rather than just being a a luxury tool for the rich. Uh, it's also uh, uh, a means to uh, make businesses more efficient, uh, save time, uh, save money, even though they're spending a lot of money, and uh, also uh, assist our members uh, in uh, accessing uh, airports or maybe uh, push for having alternate airports with uh, proper logistics for the uh, operators uh, in the region. Gentlemen, I thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for attending the conference and thank you for joining me on the panel. And uh, we look forward to uh, 
receiving more questions uh, from the audience at a later stage. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think we are ready also to uh, have our second panel. Uh, just a point, please. If, uh, feel free to ask any questions to jump in uh, mid-sentence. Uh, send me a piece of paper with your questions on it uh, so we can have uh, your concerns addressed as well uh, on the podium. Our second panel uh, for today is entitled uh, Business Aviation uh, Regulations. It's a topic that is hot on the plate for general aviation uh, and business aviation. Everybody always has a lot of questions and uh, we'll try to get some answers and maybe some action items for us as well. Uh, I would like to uh, request Mr. Uh, Nabil Lakhal and uh, Mr. Louis Sorrentino to join me on the podium.